During the Permian period, the most abundant large animals on land were not reptiles, but synapsids, the distant relatives and ancestors of mammals. The most well-known predators from this time are the sailed-back Dimetrodon, who is more iconic than most dinosaurs, and the fearsome, more mammalian Gorgonopsians. However, the Permian was also home to less famous but equally impressive carnivores. Among these were Gorynychus, a genus consisting of two species of large, mammal-like predators with wide, robust skulls and saber teeth. While it may have looked similar to the Gorgonopsians, Gorynychus was actually a theriocephalian. Theriocephalia is the sister clade to Cynodontia, the clade that later gave rise to the true mammals. Although closely connected to one famous evolutionary success story, Gorynychus has also helped science to understand other important evolutionary trends during the Permian period and beyond. Gorynychus' name has a dual meaning. Nychus is derived from the Greek word for claw, and the use of gory is self-explanatory for this top predator. Its name is also a reference to the three-headed dragon Zeme Gorinich from Kievan Rus folklore, due to both Gorynychus' ferocity and since it was first found in Russia. The Gorynychus type species, Gorynychus masuntinae, is named after Olga masuntina, who prepared the holotype specimen. The second species, Gorynychus sundirnensis, is named after the site it was found in, Sundir 1. Sundir 1 is part of the larger Sundir assemblage, and was formed during the end of the Middle Permian between 265 to 260 million years ago. Gorynychus masuntinae's fossils are found at the Urblah Formation, which is also in Russia, and was formed during either the end of the Middle Permian or the very beginning of the Late Permian. Gorynychus masuntinae is the species known from the most material, and was about the size of a wolf. While Gorynychus sundirensis is only known from incomplete skulls, it was much larger. Whereas Gorynychus masuntinae's skull was 20 centimeters long, Gorynychus sundirensis's more robust skull was between 35 to 40 centimeters long. If Gorynychus masuntinae was the Permian equivalent of a wolf, Gorynychus sundirensis was more like a bear. In the synapsid evolutionary tree, Theriocephalia is sandwiched between the Gorgonopsians and the Cynodonts, and Gorynychus's skull reflected this. From the side, it looked similar to the skulls of Gorgonopsians, but when viewed from the front, it was much wider, more like those of early Cynodonts. The skull was triangular, becoming narrower as it reached the snout. Still, like the Gorgonopsians, Gorynychus had large, saber-like fangs. The replacement teeth grew behind the fangs, so some of the time Gorynychus had two pairs of fangs. Most Gorynychus' teeth bore serrations, which were larger than those of most other Theriocephalians. Gorynychus sundirensis' teeth show extensive signs of wear. Unlike the teeth of herbivores, which can wear down from continuous use, tooth wear in carnivores usually indicates that they are biting down on hard objects. Combined with its robust skull, Gorynychus sundirensis was likely breaking bones to get to the marrow inside, much like modern bears and hyenas. Supporting this, the Sundir 1 fossil site it was found in is also the only Permian site in Eastern Europe that contains bones bearing bite marks. Gorynychus masutene's teeth largely lack the wear present in its larger relative. The sole possible exception is an isolated Gorynychus-like tooth that was found in the Erpola Formation. In all likelihood, this tooth probably came from a different species of Gorynychus that was ecologically closer to Gorynychus sundirensis. Neither species of Gorynychus was the only large predator in its ecosystem. 
Gorynikus sundiorensis coexisted with another theriocephalian named Julionathagus. Julionathagus seems to have been longer, but Gorynikus sundiorensis's larger skull suggests it was at least as deadly, and perhaps more so. Gorynikus masuntinae also shared prehistoric Russia with the slightly smaller theriocephalian Viatkosuchus. Smaller theriocephalians also lived alongside Gorynikus, including the fish-eating Perplexisuchus. Other contemporaries of Gorynikus masuntinae include the tree-dwelling Amomodont sumenia, the large tesnospondyl divinosaurus, and the herbivorous pereosaur Delta viata. Delta viata and the other pereosaurs were some of the few large Permian reptiles, and were likely a staple for Gorynikus. Gorynikus masutinae also lived alongside the Gorgonopsian Nocnixa. Nocnixa was a small, nocturnal predator, a far cry from the bear-sized beast of the future. The fact that Gorynikus was found in Russia is significant. The majority of synapsid fossils from the Middle and Late Permian have been found in the Kauru supergroup in South Africa. Even though the world's continents were combined into the supercontinent of Pangaea at the time, it is difficult to understand global evolutionary trends based on a single location. Gorynikus and its contemporaries have helped to somewhat remedy this. For example, while the Tustycynodonts were the most common herbivores in the south, the reptilian pereosaurs were more common in the north. Likewise, it turns out that most Russian Gorgonopsians were more closely related to each other than to the contemporary Gorgonopsians from South Africa. As for Gorynikus, it has helped science to unravel the mystery of the evolution of the theriocephalian clade Eu Theriocephalia. In the Kauru supergroup, derived Eu Theriocephalians suddenly just appear without any proceeding basal species or close relatives. However, Gorynikus was closely related to Eu Theriocephalia. Likewise, many of the other Russian Theriocephalians were also close relatives to the clade or early Eu Theriocephalians themselves. This confirms that Eu Theriocephalia didn't start out with a global distribution, only later migrating to what would become South Africa. On the other hand, large theriocephalians were also briefly apex predators in the south at the same time as Gorynikus. This was between the extinction of the previous large predators, the dinocephalians, and the rise of the Gorgonopsians. Since both species of Gorynikus were apex predators in Russia, it and its contemporaries have helped to confirm that the short trend of theriocephalian dominance seen in the Kauru supergroup was not just a local phenomenon. When Gorynikus was king, Gorgonopsians such as Nagnitsa were still small. However, not long afterwards, the Gorgonopsians were the top predators, and the only Theriocephalians left were small species. In the words of paleontologist Christian Kammerer, there was a complete flip-flop in what roles these carnivores were playing in their ecosystems, as if bears suddenly became weasel-sized, and weasels became bear-sized in their place. How this happened is still unclear. However, the rise of the Theriocephalians is thought to have been connected to the Capitanian mass extinction event, a mass extinction between the Middle and Late Permian. This is what drove the Dinocephalians to extinction, allowing the Theriocephalians to replace them. Gorynikus and the other large Theriocephalians may have gone extinct due to the instability of the recovering ecosystem, with the Gorgonopsians then taking advantage of the void they left behind, just as they had with the demise of the Dinocephalians. Still, while all of the large Theriocephalians, such as Gorynikus, were replaced by Gorgonopsians, a few descendants of the smaller species later evolved to once again become large predators during the end of the Permian and the beginning of the Triassic.
Gory Nikus has also helped science to better understand evolution as a whole. It was once held that, despite how fearsome they may be, large predators are too specialized to shift into other niches. Gory Nikus challenges this assumption. While Theriocephalians held a variety of niches, ranging from small insectivores and even herbivores, the discovery of Gorinicus has helped to establish that they were ancestrally large predators. This directly refutes the prior stance that large carnivores are evolutionarily stuck in that niche. Theriocephalia is not an isolated case. For instance, the clade Argosauria, which includes the crocodilians and dinosaurs, was and still is incredibly diverse. However, the archosaurs are the descendants of large, proterosuchus-like predators. Therefore, while it may not be common, large carnivores can be more evolutionarily malleable than once thought. Overall, Gorinicus is far more notable than its obscure reputation would imply. Gorinicus sundiorensis's bone-crunching behavior was previously unknown in Theriocephalians. Gorinicus has also taught science much about the evolution of the Theriocephalians, the rise and fall of different predatory clades, and has even given some insight into how adaptable even top predators can be. Both species of Gorinicus were also very different from what most people expect from the Permian period, and show how mammal-like some animals already were long before the first dinosaurs evolved. Thank you for watching. Also, a thank you to Alt Anative FTW for helping to come up with the idea for this video, and to Dominic Panetta for making art of Gorinicus specifically for this video. He is also a contributor and the chief editor of Astro Vitae magazine, an online magazine which showcases the speculative biology projects of various artists. There is a link to both Astro Vitae and Dominic Panetta's website in the description. Have a great day, and if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button.